Okay. So. Um, welcome back, everyone. I, I just wanted to remind everyone that today's session is going to be a little different than usual. Well, th this, today is going to be the, the Tuesday session. Um, right, remember that the Tuesday session is... Oh, the Tuesday. Um, Tuesday is in Saturday. Obviously, today is not Tuesday. Um, the Tuesday session... There is the link. Is is based more around what I'm calling these clinic sessions, right? Where we're working on um, the, f the fundamental nitty gritty part of horn playing. Um, and I'm trying to organize my life here. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're, ge we're geared more towards people early on in their playing. Um, and it's not so much the stuff I do on a daily basis. That note, um, for fun today, I'm going to use my triple horn, um, just because I should spend more time on it. I'm not currently playing it a lot, so today you will get to hear me hack my way through a triple. Um, yeah, my usual doubles over there. Um, if anyone cares, I know horn people care. It's a Paxman 80M from 1979. Uh, it's a compensating triple, not a full triple. There you go, that was exciting. <laughs> now we're learning. So we're going to start with a slightly different buzzing uh, routine. Let's start with a free buzz, like usual, but... Ooh, I think I have two. Why am I getting two notes? That's fine. Um, yeah, just let's just free buzz that G, thinking back to that M mm shape to form the corners, or M mm poo, how you start that buzz, right? And really use that p from the poo, P-U, to get the buzz going. <gasps> It'll feel like you're exaggerating the front of the note, which is exactly what we're trying to do. Um, as you develop the free buzz, and realize I'm now saying something different than usual, where I usually say free buzz is about warming up the muscles and getting the air. This is about learning to set up an embouchure. Different today. So yeah, think mm for the corners, poo for the aperture, mm poo with air. Good old mm poo, do another one. And last mm poo. Now what we want to do, we're going to, if you have a rim, we're going to use a rim. If you don't have a rim... Uh, John Erickson has a cool, if you have a mouthpiece with like a removable rim, you can turn like a coffee scoop into one, or any number of hundreds of supplement scoops. You can make a rim. He has a thing. I'll try to link it in the coffee below when I'm done. Um, <clears throat> if you don't have a rim, I, stick on the free buzz. We're going to do a little bit of this. So, we're going to think mm poo, and then we're just going to move the pitch up and down with airspeed. Just do it a few times on your own, thinking good mm corners up and down. And now let's go the other way. If you classify yourself as not a beginner, or you find the, that this is easy for you, think about our points we go through, right? Corner, chin, incisors. Going di ya yi ya da like that, right? <laughs> and use a rim. Or just keep free buzzing. <laughs> now let's go. As we start to widen these intervals, um, really focus on continuing to blow air. Now, if you're free buzzing, I want you to go to your mouthpiece. If you have a rim, stay on the rim, because um, we're going to start widening these intervals, and that's where the the translation of the free buzz isn't going. Hopefully, right now you have air going and the buzz is happening. So let's keep expanding. Let's go. Go 
the other way. And we'll extend a little more. There's a tritone. Okay, now on the mouthpiece, <clears throat> and then we put stupid horn. Um, I want to teach everybody a, a, a buzzing exercise I use. So let's say you have a hard time getting a buzz, or if you teach, you're having a hard time teaching a buzz. Like I, something's just not working. You've, you've gone through mm poos. They've got a free buzz, but they put the mouthpiece on, and it's like the world stops working. <clears throat> One thing I like to do, um, I, I actually did this exercise when I was coming back from an injury. Um, I'm sure this is probably not new. Um, cover the hole, and we're just going to buzz a note. We're going to go. <sighs> Obviously, you can't buzz when you block it, and that's the point, is if when you do that, you should really feel the corners, that mm, really just, like, kick on. So try that again, right? <sighs> and, and the corners light up. We want to make sure we're still taking a really good breath, and we're not forcing things. So do the same thing, plug in the hole. And now what we're gonna do, now that you, you're hopefully you're feeling these corners turn on, we're just gonna do that and move the finger. So we're gonna go. We'll do a few of these. And for exercises to build up your buzz, like, this is a great one. This is up there with the, uh, and these exercises do the same thing for me. They they help teach the buzz. Where if it's not working, they both force the buzz to work. So, you know, try this one again. And one last one. Now buzz this pitch. Thinking about the chin and pulling the chin down. Now plug it into the horn, <clears throat> and we're going to play our way through exercise number one, which means I need to get our metronome, uh, dronetonetool.com, 60, there we go, alright, so let's play number one, um, quick instruction rundown, we will do the repeat. Everything has the tongue, just basic ta, ta. If you consider yourself a more advanced player, on the repeat, use the B horn fingerings. Um, if you have a triple, I guess if you hated yourself, you could do them on the high F horn. I'm not going to because I don't hate myself that much. All right, here we go. One, two, with a good breath. Three. <laughs> off here 
And what we're going to do this time is, in the measures of rest, we'll breathe out for two counts and breathe in for two counts. So the air is always in, the air is always in motion, right? We're never, the air never stagnates. So release the note by just stopping the lift and keep blowing out. Here we go. B horn fingerings, or just do the F one more time. One, two, three. <laughs> rest before we move on to the next exercise i remember i mentioned that thing yesterday about uh doing the recording that's happening I, I put it up on horn people people seem to care a little bit so i guess it's happening um to that end um if you're looking for the links if you just go to the horn people page on facebook there's a source folder i've linked oil your horns um and yeah, it's, it's a, just a bot corral from one of my books in four parts. We're going to put a whole bunch of it together, and we're going to see what comes out the other end. And I'm sure I'm going to hate myself for this, because it's going to be a massive edit. But it's something fun, I suppose. Oil your horn. What a great time to oil your horn. Do horn maintenance. It's important. This horn has a lot of valves. <clears throat> so, as we sit here, does is anybody got a cool horn they play on? <clears throat> I like my triple. It feels more like a super B-flat horn than a triple, if that means anything to you. To me, it does. It doesn't play like a big triple, even though it weighs like a metric ton. Um... That is compensating. It it, ha it feels more like a single B flat horn with a turbo key on it. Uh, hard to play live because it's got this like world's smallest lead pipe. If you look right, that's that's the lead pipe. W what is that there? Yeah, that's the whole lead pipe. This is all fake metal um, for the hand feel. Oh, does yours have a high B flat? I know that's like the <clears throat> the crux. I got to play on a, a couple of the old Schmitz, and they were like, woohoo, nice horns. All right, here we go. Um, <clears throat> a Schmidt with a high B flat. <sighs> is that real? Um, okay, there it is. There's always the caveat. Um, yeah. Cool. So let's, let's keep jumping through. And yet one reason I use the triple today is I haven't been playing it a lot. So I felt like some like really rudimentary, fundamental stuff would be good on it. So here we go. Um, we're going to do B. Uh, <clears throat> the first part of B, this is just power scales. We've, do we've done power scales before. We're developing them a little bit. Um, just so everyone remembers, I didn't write it out. The All of the whole notes. Wah. Lip slur, regular notes. The, the slurs are always on the harmonic series. The scale are always the scale. Um, 
So let's just go through B. We'll do it one or two times. And again, because this is sort of geared to easier, we'll pick how many keys we go through. So let's do the first one in F. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Let's do this. We're gonna go through all the harmonic fingerings. I'm gonna put the metronome on like I meant to. And if it's a key you don't know, do the F one again. I don't know. Um, usually I would rep if this was like a clinic or, or a group lesson, we'd rep the open one quite a few times. Um, so I'm gonna go down through all the harmonic fingerings um, and we'll go from there. So here we go second valve. One, two, Yuck. terrible misfortune of playing a compensating horn they're just they're an intonation nightmare it, it, if you thought a triple was a disaster to have into in the first place put a compensating valve in the mix um so yeah my second valve is really horribly out of tune uh let's go first valve so the the, the b flat harmonic on to first valve <laughs> First and second valve. So from a low A. Sorry about that. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. 
short break and then we're gonna keep running through this and turn off the metronome because it's in my ear and it's destroying me I need to share this thing now um, but that uh, there we go sharing to social medias there we go and we're going okay so That works. Uh, the next one we're going to jump down to starts at line 38, and it's just sort of building building up the harmonic series. <clears throat> and we're going to speed this one up a bit, and yeah, I, I sort of just rely on on feedback in my life. How would this work? Uh, we're going to go 96. And uh, the thing I always talk about when I'm teaching is we want to find the slots of, of the notes, right? We want them to be if you feel like they snap in place um, I think I talked about it in, I don't know another one um, this idea where at the top it feels like you rubber band into it and when you descend it's like you fall through the floor um, that's how it was taught to me so let's do start in line 38 we're going to start on 2-3 and we'll just work our way all the way up through the B horn as well um, so this is a balance sort of it's trying to like keep the concepts easy for earlier clinic style playing but then also working on stuff that us other folks need to work on so starting two three below the staff uh, one two three <laughs> start one and two same thing feels a little slow to me um but that's just to me if if this tempo change was a horrible idea please someone tell me there we go a little quicker all right one and two and one two three <laughs> sorry that's for me one two two <laughs> So remember this idea of falling through the floors or the snapping of the rubber band only works if you sustain the air. If you back off the air and try to slide into the note, it doesn't work. 
Um, you need to the the vibration needs that constant speed speed of air, which is what we work with the buzz every day, right? It's just that the idea that the lips vibrate around the air column. This is putting it in practice. So first valve, let's keep going up, and one, two, three. <laughs> trying to have this really smooth beautiful slur the the bump is good bump bump good good bump second valve and one a two a three sorry i just did the wrong one 38 measure 38 not b for max and one two three Take a brief pause. We're gonna work our way up the B horn. Uh, if you're on a single horn, just um, I'm trying to think what I'm saying. It's harmonically. Start on open C and then work your way back down as we work our way up. And harmonically, it'll be okay. All right, it'll be. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so starting B flat two three. All right. Yeah. And one, two, three. <laughs>
veterans on Sorry. Here we go. One and two. Um, teaching note and learning note. This is one way I like to teach range too, right? Just use the harmonic series, ascend to the next semitone. And it, as long as the student understands that um, what's happening process-wise is that the air and the buzz don't really change as the length of the horn gets progressively shorter and or longer. Um, and you encourage them to just blow the same air, I find it works and, and it prevents over squeezing. Um, and over time, when it's, they build, you know, you build strength and you build strength, um, facility and efficiency, the higher range comes easier. So let's go thumb one, two, I'll shut up. Thumb one, two, and uh, one, two, two. <laughs> start from the fifth measure the the triad for me sorry two three <laughs>
there. If I was on my own, I'd continue to hate myself, and I would go up the the the, the high F horn for me. I would do the harmonic slurs on. Um, and it's it's just an utter nightmare up there. But we won't do that. I'm not gonna put y'all through that. Okay, turn the page. Um, I would do this. So so I guess one one point of mention. Um, since I call this a clinic, you know, I teach all the clinics. In a general clinic, I would never do this much work on it. I, I would always try to find something in the music, work on it, and then relate it back. I would look for sneaky moments where the harmonic series shows up in the music. Generally, those are all the moments the student struggles with, right? Because they have to do a leap, and you go, oh, look, it's an E to a G, and you can't do that because it's a leap. <laughs> um and then you use that as the gateway to teaching the harmonic series and you do a couple of these exercises um that's sort of my sneaky way um i always find if they're a piano player or they, they come from piano um or often you can even just go back to the recorder um and say oh you know cover whole note go down um or you relate to the first five note exercise on the piano so you do you have you know this thing If you played piano, you've done 800 million oh, times. Uh, you couldn't hear that because I had it turned off. This thing. That exercise. Um, you relate it to that, and they start to understand, oh, this is the horn scale. This should be easy. So <clears throat> it frames it as something that's the first step, not the last step. Where, where to me, when I teach horn, I start with the harmonic series and then add the scale, not the other way around since I think it's important for students to understand how the instrument works at a fundamental level as opposed to going through adjacent harmonics or parallel harmonic series where like, doesn't that process kind of harder? Or you just learn to blow air in a straight line and you wiggle your finger and good things happen. All right, so here we go. Next exercise, uh, developing the harmonic series. I mean, everything here we've done, um, let's do the first one. Um, and where are we on time? I'll keep an eye on the time. That's not where the time is. Ah, uh, da, da, da. yeah, we, we'll we'll do this. We're gonna do. Let's do them all on the F horn, since if you're ever in a strike for time, spend your time on the F horn. So we'll do all this F horn only. That's our tempo. And one, two, two. <laughs> series more articulation of the harmonic series it's great one two second valve <laughs> intonation make sure you're hearing the note through the rest right since you, you come back in on the same note you left so encourage the student and encourage yourself to have that note sounding the whole time here we go two and three last combo two three <laughs> and three. First and third. Two, three. 
So next exercise, 71, measure 71 of C. Um, we'll do this starting on F, and we're going to ascend up the B horn. So start open, F open, then we'll go up the B horn. Again, if you don't have a B horn, descend the F horn, and we'll enjoy those crunchy crunches we get. Beautiful. There we go. Um, starting F open. One, two, three. Quick teaching concept note, I always play it then have them play it back. Um, when we introduce a new concept that's additive and scaffolded onto something else, as this is, and the student, then we go, hey, did you know you just skipped harmonics? And they go, no. And you explain it, right? Well, we don't play the E and we don't play the B flat. So you're actually learning to now skip harmonics and doing wider intervals. And I find if you get the success first and then the concept, it works, right? So let's go thumb two, three. Just a little side, stealing my approach, just giving it away. And here we go, two, three, one, uh, two, uh, three. And now we'll go thumb one, two, one, uh, two, three. Okay, uh, next thing up, we'll take a little break, and then <clears throat> I thought, what's a clinic session without the single most asked question you get? I think teaching horn to younger players is, how do I play higher? And I go, when you find out, let me know. Ah, jokes. I like low horn. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, we're going to take this out of Jaunty 112. Um, this is that Farkas exercise, right? Ba -de -da -da -de -da. This is too slow. Um, so, so this is something, you know, in the, the progressive approach of these clinic things, this is something you'd probably have high school kids doing, All right? It's up in a range where they're playing more, um, or sort of advanced junior high, <clears throat> um, or just advanced students who've probably been taking lessons to get into this range. Um, I only went up to the G today because I figured, yeah, we'll just go up on the B horn. So there we go. So we'll start F23 on the A flat. 
and we're just gonna keep stacking. We're not gonna do the full octave vis-a-vis uh, -vis the. Let me turn that off. Sorry. Uh, the um, the Farkas book. We're just gonna do a couple reps of it. Um, and I always tell people to think on on the half note to accelerate your air. I know it's a da it's dangerously close to the twa twa, but because I teach lead pipe buzzing, the the fundamental idea of accelerating airspeed exists. We didn't do lead pipe buzzing today, but it, it's built off that concept, which is to say we've already introduced the idea of accelerating the air. It's not do a crescendo. Again, high school concept plus not not a not a junior high concept. Um, what it means is that you can increase the airspeed without becoming louder um it's a way you know we augment sound color to get a brighter sound or a lush sound because bright and dark are stupid words um but yeah it's uh it's really i think you know, we add overtones and we take overtones away so yeah whatever i'm gonna shut up we're gonna play it so yeah just think about accelerating the air not getting louder but just accelerating the air through the half note. Uh, one, two, one, two, three. <gasps> it should there should be one more note at the end. Oops. Alright, here we go. First and second valve now. Two measures of nothing. And then one, two, one, two. Again, secrets of the stream, all the mistakes I make when I set things at 8 in the morning. First valve. One, and two, and yeah, one, two. Second valve, then one and two and one, two. <sighs> Open one and two, and one, two. on this um with this concept of accelerating the air through the half note don't breathe after the second half note i just about did it so i thought about it don't breathe there here we go thumb one two one and two throwing the high horn. I'm doing this all on the B horn. No sneaky sneaky triple things here. <clears throat> That'd be really easy though. It's tempting. I really don't like playing up high. Alright, thumb two. One, two, Okay, 
um, what I would generally do on a triple is I would try to do a couple reps on the high B horn. So like I'd start on the G. Uh, and just keep going up higher and higher and higher and higher. But I'm not doing that today because my face tired like yesterday still. So now <clears throat> we're going to finish with that little descending thing. That's too fast. Let's slow it down. 66 is a good tempo. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> all harmonic slurs. Hold the button down, blow through the horn. Starting on the F. One, thumb open. And when you get the last note, just hold it and sort of let it diffuse into nothing as the goal. This is a chance, <clears throat> you know, one, maybe the, sorry, let me silence the click. Maybe uh, earlier on in your career and the goal is just getting through this. Um, or you're saying, okay, I want to sustain an even color as I descend and then let the last note melt to nothing. Um, there's no dynamics on stuff, but you can find your own things to work on. So what I'm trying to do is to not only navigate down the harmonic series with the least amount of work, I'm also trying to maintain tone color, especially on this stupid instrument. <laughs> um, but then let that last note land and then just diffuse to kind of learn to control the release of it. So second valve, here we go. Thumb two, sorry. B flat two. <clears throat> One, two. Okay, thumb one. One, two, two. Thumb one, two. One, two, thumb one, two. I caught a harmonic in there. Boop. If you catch the harmonic, it's whatever. Just blow through. Uh, thumb two, three. And F open. One, three. And one, two, three. Um, I lost the pitch. Hang on, sorry. stutter thank you stuttering computer i still don't have more ram yet i'm waiting for it to show up now everything in calgary shut down so getting it's going to be harder um <clears throat> yeah and then and the last thing of the day i'm gonna do it off camera um because i don't know what it is yet is just do some kind of a lyrical study or if you're like no nah, i feel good i'm done then be done enjoy you're not doing more um goodbye metronome yeah so that was the the clinic one I, I hope there were some things in it of use. <clears throat> I know for me, 
uh, the first clinic when I talked about it, it's to me this is what I call number one in, which is where you just go through, you know, your method books and do the first exercise in all of them. It, can you do the basic things? Great. So tomorrow I'm not doing a stream. I'm gonna take Sundays off, as I mentioned. Uh, again, tell more people. It'd be great to have more. You know, keep growing. Uh, we have big projects coming, which is fun. Let me know if there's exercises you want to throw in here. Um, I, I have a huge pool of exercises. I either love to learn more, and you can watch me struggle to learn, or I'll probably start switching with Unlosh, Loshbergs, and Clark. So we'll probably see more flow studies, maybe some of that guy's book. He made six. I don't remember what it's called. Plog. Some of the Plog trumpet stuff. Yeah, well, well, next week I'll bring something new. So uh, if there's stuff you want to do, let me know. We'll I'll drop it in Monday. Uh, so yeah, I'll be back Monday. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Keep practicing. Make music. Learn some jazz. Learn to improv. If you don't improv, might as well, right? What else are you going to do? Play video games? That's what I'm going to do. But when I get shot and I lose in Siege, then I spin a wheel and I uh, just do a little improv in a key. Uh, work on things that are hard for you. Okay, thanks. I'm going to stop talking and bye.